Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Have you ever put a new telescope on your mount and just had that nagging feeling that it won't be able to cope with the additional weight? Well, that is exactly what I've done. I've put a new telescope in the observatory and I'm just worried that the CEM60 will not be able to cope. So let's take a look inside the observatory and I'll show you what I'm shooting with. So as you can see, I have put the Redcat 51 in the observatory. So join me in this video while I explain why I've put my smallest telescope on my permanent mount. So why would I go to the lengths of building an observatory just to put my smallest telescope, the lightest, the easiest to set up telescope on the permanent mount? Well, the main reason is because of the weather. So we have been having a horrendous spell of weather here in the UK over the past couple of months. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and as you could probably tell, a lot of snow over the last couple of days. And I just haven't had a clear night or a full clear night um, to actually set up multiple rigs. So I've wanted to use this Red Cat 51 for some time now. I've actually owned this for about seven or eight months. Um, I don't think I featured it on the channel. I have been using it, but I haven't um, featured it in this, uh, in this channel yet. So I wanted to put it inside so when there was a couple of hours of breaks in the weather, I could just open up the observatory lid and start imaging and that is exactly what I have been doing over the past couple of months. So I am sure most of you have heard of the Red Cat 51 telescope. It is a super wide field telescope with a focal length of 250 millimeters so great for capturing those wide field images and I've paired it with the ZWO 2600 mono and the three nanometer SHO filters from Antlia and I'm just really Really excited to capture some of those grand wide vistas that you see in space. So my target um, over the last few weeks has been the Flaming Star and the Tadpole Nebula. Now I've shot both of these targets before um, with the Ascar and with my old Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian telescopes and I was quite happy with those as individual images. They're not my best work um, but they were edited quite quite a long time ago. But I've always wanted to capture them side by side in one image. So that is the plan over the next month or so. So with the 250 millimeter focal length, not only will I get both of the, the Flaming Star and the Tadpole Nebula in the shot, I should also get a, a couple of different nebulas around the target as well. So I think there's IC407 and maybe a couple of others in frame. So I'm really excited to, to capture some data over the next few weeks. Now, unfortunately, there is quite a bright moon at the moment. So I'm shooting tonight with a full moon. I'm going to capture some HA data and I'm just hoping that the target is far enough away from that full moon to actually get some usable data. Um, over the next few weeks I should get um, a few hours of uh, moonless sky if, if the weather plays ball so that's when I'll capture the O3. Um, but yeah I'm going to wait until it gets dark, I'll come back out, I'll open up the observatory and I'll start shooting.
So it's nights like this where I'm absolutely thrilled to have the observatory in the garden. It was minus six degrees when I went outside and opened the lid, so I really wouldn't want to be outside for too long setting up a rig. Um, I've captured a couple of O3 subs tonight when there was no moon. That moon has now risen and I've moved over to HA and that first sub has just popped up on screen there. So I'll put that up for you so you can take a look. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really good. There's the Flaming Star Nebula. I think the detail in that looks quite nice. You can definitely see the tadpoles in the, the tadpole nebula. So yeah, very happy with that. And these are the surrounding nebulas that I was talking about earlier. So nice framing with this target. So I've set a time lapse going in the observatory as well. And I'm hoping I might get really lucky and capture a meteor because it is the peak of the Geminids meteor shower tonight or early hours of the morning. So that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I'll show you the flaming star and tadpole image in a second. I do really appreciate you watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button. If any of you are out there using the Red Cat 51, let me know some good targets this time of year. I would really appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button. It does really help this channel. But thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.